So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make your own sterling silver using fine silver and go through all the math and make it as easy as possible to understand and to do on your own. So let's get started. So it looks like I have a lot of stuff going on here, but these coins and stuff right here are not part of actually making your own sterling. These just happen to be an example of ways to get material. So these pennies right here are actually 95% copper. Basically all American pennies that were made in 1982 and back are made out of 95% copper. Anything newer is made out of zinc. It's like 97% zinc and just copper plated. So these quarters are actually 90% silver, which is only 2% off from being sterling silver. And you can melt these down and use them in jewelry. Just make sure that you mark them properly because they are not technically sterling. American quarters were made out of silver, I believe up into 1964, but I'll put the proper date on the screen now seeing that I don't know off the top of my head, but I know all these are silver for sure. So with all that being said, these are actually fine silver or pure silver bars and coins. And then you can also get a silver shot like this. This is actually the best thing to melt because it has a bigger surface area and that allows more heat to go into everything and melt down faster. So bars and coins are a, another common way to get your fine silver, but you do have to cut it up or you should cut it up before trying to melt it. The other thing you're going to need is pure copper. Make sure that it is actually 99% copper. Some copper wire and stuff like that has lead or other additives in it. So make sure when you buy copper, it is pure and you can cut it up into smaller pieces like this, or you can even buy it in shot forms or just chip forms. And it's usually pretty cheap. So you might be wondering, why would you even mix copper with pure silver anyways? Why not just use pure silver? It'd probably be better. Well, it's really soft, actually, and it scratches really easily and can be bent really easily. So when you add just enough copper to it, it will strengthen it and make it into an alloy instead of just a pure element. Basically, the copper works together with it to strengthen it. And that's why sterling silver is used in most jewelry, cutlery, and stuff like that. Because it is stronger. You can make stuff out of just pure silver if you want to. It will be a lot softer and it's going to get scuffed up and scratched really easily though. But if you want to, you can. And I've seen some amazing looking things made out of just pure silver. So before we go any further on this, I have to talk about the sponsor of this video. So I thought Skillshare would be a fitting sponsor for my channel. Seeing that you come here to learn stuff and Skillshare is a community for learning. And just like with my videos, you can learn at your own pace. And one of the things I really like about it is every class is project oriented. So you're working towards a goal and not just learning random skills. So you'll actually have something by the end of it. So if you are wanting to start out learning some stuff about Fusion 360, I suggest Kevin Kennedy. He has a three part class that takes you from installing the program to getting just about all of the basics down. Also be sure to check out Vladimir Mariano. He has a bunch of classes on 3D printing and how to think in the terms of actually printing out objects, along with teaching you how to use Fusion 360 as well. So the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. This gives you full access to the entire catalog that Skillshare has to offer. And after that, Skillshare is as low as $10 a month with an annual subscription. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So let's actually start making our sterling. You're going to need a scale that has very small units. So ounces, grams, and stuff like that. And I'm going to tear this, which basically just zeroes it out to the little thing I put on here. So the measurements will be proper when I add to it. And then I'm going to put one troy ounce of silver in here. All right, so that's gonna be close enough. And then I'm going to switch this over to gramps. And we actually need this number here. 
So now I'm going to do some math and show you exactly how I get to this one number that you're just going to use to make all of your calculations work. And you don't have to do all this math every time, you just have to do it this once, but I'm going to show you how to get to it and why it makes sense. So you want the fine silver, so the 99.9%, .9%, and these are all going to be percents. And then we're going to subtract the 925% of the sterling to get what we need, which is 7.4%. Then you need to take the percentage here and turn it into a decimal. And to do that, you just need to move the decimal point over two spaces. So that will be 0 0.074, like that. This is the number you're going to need. And all we need to do now is take our original 31.1 and multiply it by this new number. And that will equal what we need to add. But I'm not going to do that in my head. So here it is on the calculator, which is 2.3. And what this is, is grams, because this was grams. So we just need 2.3 grams of copper added to our already measured out 3.11 grams of silver. And that's it. So to make this whole thing a lot easier, just take your amount of silver that you have and multiply it by 0 0.074 and then that will equal the copper that you need, and all this will be in grams. So, pretty easy. So to do that with this, I'm just going to tear this out so it's at zero again, and then add some of my copper. So this is our mixture that we're going to use to make our sterling silver. So that's about it. That same math equation will work for any amount of silver. You just have to have a scale that you can actually use that much on. The scale can only go to uh, one and a half troy ounces, so I can't really do much on it. And you can go under an ounce and do the same thing. So now we need to melt this. So when it comes to actually pouring your metals out, there's a couple different options. You can use different ingot molds to make it into workable bars or into rods so you can turn it into wire easier. This is a graphite one right here that you can pour it into and it'll make whatever shape is here. This is an adjustable steel mold that you can just unscrew like that. And you can see it's just a flat surface. But one cool thing you can do with this is if you don't want a piece that's that big, you can shrink it all the way down and make a little square piece of wire or something square like that. And you can pretty much go anywhere in this range. So there's also this one, which happens to be for making wire. And you can see that it has the channels for that. Or if you flip it over, it is also for making sheets. And you can do the same thing, which is really nice. You also can pour it directly into some water. And this will basically make your own casting grain that you can use later for casting new pieces or anything like that. So you have options. So when it comes to actually melting down your metals, you're going to need a crucible. I have a video on how to season this because when you get it, you just can't use it straight out of the box. You have to season it. So right up here will be a link to that video. It's basically just putting borax into it and melting it into it. But I show you exactly what to do. You're also going to need a torch that can actually handle this. So I'm using a Smith's Little Torch that is hooked up to oxygen acetylene. If you are using something like this, it will not work. You can use propane, but it has to be a pro propane oxygen setup because it does doesn't get hot enough like this. And if you have one of those tiny butane torches that I see a lot of people using, it won't do this at all. You can buy something that is called map gas that will do this. It comes in like a yellow container. I'll put it on the screen now. And it's very similar to the container like this, but it has a different nozzle setup and it's a much hotter uh, gas. One thing I also like to do 
is to use a tripod. So the tripod allows me to put my crucible on top of it and keep it off the ground and allows me to heat it. You can build enclosures for this and everything too, but I don't really have the setup for that. So this is how I've been doing it. So what I'm gonna do is take all of my metal and just kind of pour it in there. And this white container back here is full of borax, which is a laundry detergent type of soap that you can get almost anywhere, but it also acts as a flux. So just sprinkle a little bit in here. It also helps with like impurities and stuff like that. And that's actually what's all over this is the flux holding everything down. Once everything's melted, it pretty much floats on top of the flux and allows for smoother pouring and just making everything work properly. So pick it up, it's pretty cheap. Also make sure to use some sort of dark glasses with this because everything is going to get very bright. So make sure you have some sort of ventilation or do this outside. So when it comes to the mold itself, you need to prepare this. As you can see, it's all wet in here. This is actually an oil that's in there. And that works fine for keeping the metal from sticking to it. You can also, if you're using a acetylene setup, put soot onto it and it'll make it so nothing will get stuck to it. So to do this, we're just gonna turn on the acetylene part only and kind of paint this with soot. And from that, these won't even really be hot. So I could close this up, make sure you're sealed completely on the bottom and tighten this up. And one other thing is this needs to be warm. If it's not, it's going to suck all the heat away and freeze your metal probably near the top. And then you'll just pour everything over the top and all over the place. That's also why I have these metal things down that have lips on them. So if you do spill, it catches in here and you'll be able to collect all your metal and it won't burn everything. You can use a torch like this and just kind of heat this whole thing up. Or you can use your Smith's little torch also, or your casting torch to really heat it up real quick. So I'm also going to have my carbon one here, which is just for the extra silver if I overflow my mold or if it just can't hold enough. So I'm gonna show you as close as I possibly can with this to show what is melting down and how it all melts together. I'm using a macro lens on my camera so you can see this and so I don't melt my lens. So you want it to be super liquidy like this before you can pour it. There we go. So all this is going to be extremely hot now. And then you can see I got some silver outside of it. So like I said, make sure to do it on something that can catch your metal. So when you're pouring your metal, you want to make sure it's all in one continuous flow. I had kind of stopped a little bit because I was afraid of overflowing. So now I have two pieces. But there we go. There's our new ingots for making wire. I need to quench these and get them cooled down so I can handle them and then probably put them through some pickling solution to get everything else off of them and they should be good to use. So I know a lot of people are afraid of this torch and if you already have a torch setup that you like and you don't want to have to spend the couple hundred dollars or around 700 ish dollars to get this set up you can always get a furnace and there's a bunch of different types of this one I just happen to have this and all you have to do really is plug it in, set your temperature, and fill this up with your metal of choice and melt it down. And once it gets to its temp that it needs to be at, you can just pour it out of there directly into your mold. It's also really good for doing castings, but it takes about an hour or so for this to warm up all the way. And this takes about six minutes or so, but you're also going through a bunch of different gas and that can add up in cost eventually. I'll have links to everything in the description so you could check out the pricing of things and see what fits your budget for doing this. All right, so here we are. Our nice clean little pieces for rolling out.
So to do this, you're going to need a rolling mill of some sort. So I have a combo one, so this can make wire and flat sheet. And this one is one of the wire only ones. So I'll be making a full video on how to turn these into multiple types of wire using this fairly soon. It might already be up by the time you see this. But if not, keep checking out my channel and subscribe and you'll be notified when that video comes out. So that should sum up just about everything to get your own sterling silver to the point where you can start working it and making it into whatever you need. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, leave a like and to let me know in the comments if this is something you would actually do or if you just want to buy sterling already made. And I get back to just about every comment on all of my videos, so feel free to leave a comment. Other than that, that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.